In Genesis, when God does this repeatedly, he says something repeatedly. He says, after each day of doing this, and it was good. I mean, and it's repeated, so it's like it means something. It's repeated. And what does it mean? If you confront potential with truth and courage, then what you produce is good. Well, so that's a good thing to know if you want to produce what's good. It's like, confront the potential with truth and courage, and what you produce is good. Great. So that's a, that's a nice thing to know. It's a fundamental ethical axiom, and it's sort of predicated on faith. It's not easy to be courageous, and it's not easy to tell the truth. But the theory is, if you manage both of those in the face of potential, then what you do is you produce out of potential what is good. So that's a theory worth investigating, perhaps for the rest of your life. And then there's a corollary to this story. And the story is, at the end of God's creation, describing how order emerges from chaos or being from potential, there's this strange line, which is probably the most important line that's ever been written in our culture, at the basis of our culture. And that is that men and women are made in the image of God. And what does that mean? Well, if God is that which confronts potential with truth and courage and makes what's good out of potential, that seems to indicate that we have the same faculty. Like, on a smaller scale, we're not omniscient, but we're not bloody well nothing. You know, our, our conscience is integrally tied into the structure of being in some manner we don't understand. And it certainly is the case that we take what isn't and turn it is into what is. That's something, man. That's, that's quite the trick we've been able to manage. And so we're made in that image. And so what are we supposed to do? Well, that's what we're supposed to do. We're supposed to type our letters and make our phrases and construct our sentences and build our paragraphs and put our chapters together and make our books and communicate to people and straighten out the damn culture and constrain the malevolence and ignorance that besets each of us and push nature back and extend ourselves out into the unknown and confront the potential that's there in illimitable quantities and make the world better than it could be otherwise. To move it away from hell, which and it can certainly become that, and toward heaven to the degree that we can manage that. And that is a good enough goal. That's the thing. You need something, you know, because your life is tough. It's hard. You need something that, you know, you need something to get out of bed for and fight for. And that's something, right? To fight, let's say, against hell and for heaven. That's something to fight for. Especially... And you know, if you, if, you don't, if you want to be convinced about this, like read a little bit about hell. Read the Gulag Archipelago, or read Ordinary Men, or read The Rape of Nanking, or read about what happened in Nazi Germany during Auschwitz and all the catastrophes of the 20th century, and see if you believe in hell. And see if you think, well, maybe not having that happen anymore would be a good idea. And then think about maybe that's something you could contribute to. And then it wouldn't have to happen anymore. And that would be a good thing, and God only knows what great things we could manage under such conditions. We're becoming incredibly technologically powerful. And what would it be if we became, what would it be like if we became equally wise? Well, that would really be something. God only knows what we could manage in the next 20 years or the next 100 years, you know? We're running at 40%, most of us. You know, because we're half in and half out. And it's not surprising, because life is difficult. It's like, well, what if you were 90% in, or 95% in, or, or all in? Because you're all in anyways, right? It's a, it's a life and death game. No one gets out of this. Everyone dies. You might as well commit yourself. And you might as well commit yourself to the highest good that you can attain, because why not? It'll imbue your life with meaning. It's hard, the responsibility's there, but all the meaning's in the responsibility. And that'll make your life better. And it'll make your family's life better. And it should make your culture better. Maybe it'll make the world better. It's like, that'll justify your damn miserable existence at 3 o'clock in the morning when you're wondering what the hell you're doing here. And that's a good thing, because there's going to be days when you're aching and tired and sore, and there's people in your family that are sick, and you're cynical and bitter, and you need a reason to get up. And you think, yeah, well, a little more heaven and a little less hell 
maybe I can pull that off today and tomorrow and next week. And that's worth struggling forward for. And so that's how it looks to me. So thank you very much.